Before I begin this video properly, I need to get something off my chest because it's been bugging me ever since I did research into this game. Oh, and brace yourself, it's going to be a ride. Okay, I'll start off by saying that I haven't heard anything about this game being released on Steam in May last year, so thank you very much, Steam. Secondly, what is up with people not naming this game right? It's mainly on the Wikipedia page, but look at this mess. Officially, it's called Maui Malad in Cold Shadows, but just look at this. The main title of the game, according to the Wikipedia page, is apparently Donald in Maui Malad, Maui Malad in Cold Shadows. I just... Uh... Okay. Okay. I should probably move on before I get more pissed at this. Also, Murray Mallard isn't a forgotten Disney character, it's just Donald in a metafictional role. Just in case people get confused. Now onto the game itself, and I've gotta say, it saddens me that not many people remember this game, as it's one of the most wackiest and enjoyable games I've ever played. The story is that Maui Malad, a detective that was called to a tropical island when an idol has gone missing. If the idol isn't returned soon, the island will explode? Well, that's what the Wikipedia page says, but seeing as how they failed to name a video game correctly, I'm going to take this info with a grain of salt. Let's go old fashioned here and check out the original manual, and it has everything you need to know about the game, from its levels, detailed descriptions of items, power-ups, and its character- Well, I was going to finish with, well, detailed characters? Huh. Getting back to the plot for a bit, the race is on to find the lost idol and with many locations to explore from a creepy mansion to an ancient ninja training grounds and speaking of ninjas, along the way a witch doctor gives you the power to transform into a ninja. So you're either running and gunning your way through the levels or going all out with your stick. That sounded a lot better in my head. Speaking of that stick, you can also use it to lash onto things and swing to higher platforms. While in detective mode, the weapon that you have is a gun and it fires many different Bugs. No joke, you can collect them in each level and some of them are bullets, shurikens and small fart bomb that kills pretty much everything on screen. Seriously. I am sad that I lack the talent to make something like that up. As for the rest of the game, I have to say there's not a lot more I can honestly say about it, and nothing else new happens as you keep switching forms to get through the levels. Shooting and beating up enemies, collecting bugs, and amulets which in turn help you to stay in your ninja form. For some reason. There are bonus levels which you traverse through a roller coaster while riding a unicycle. This game is so fucking weird and I love it. I will say that the game does get a little more difficult as it goes on, but not to the extreme degree. Also the levels get a bit more... Bizarre. It goes from a few jungle levels to a sunken slash flying pirate ship to whatever the hell this is. It's a real shame that this game isn't more fondly remembered by people, as I can totally see why people who do know this game consider it a hidden classic on all of these systems. I think the reason why it fell into obscurity was because when it was released, so was the N64, and subsequently all 2D games were thrown aside and sadly forgotten about in favour of 3D games. Which ultimately comes down to bad timing, really. Now, this is the part where I'd normally end the video here, but while researching this game, I discovered that there's a Game Boy version of this game, and surprisingly, it ain't half bad for a GP game. Mind you, I'm only slightly exaggerating a bit, as the game is slightly shorter than the original, plus the music and sound are very bit-crushed and almost unrecognisable. And while I'm on the subject of music, I have to say that the music in this game is unlike anything I've ever heard in a Disney game before, as it's very atmospheric in some parts. But I'd be lying if I didn't find some of it a little bit... odd. But not in a bad way. Nobody
So to end this video on a high note by saying that if you want to experience a really well done Disney game then I highly recommend you go and buy it on Steam as it's only £4.79 or $5.98 if you live in the USA. Or if you want to be one of those people try and find a physical copy of the game on the SNES, PC, Sega or even the Game Boy version if you can. Not the most satisfying end to a video I know and it's just an advertisement for the most part. But I really can't think of other things to say about this game other than to say that if you really want to experience a forgotten and an interesting gem, you'll have to find out for yourself. Ah, well, glad that's over with. Time to rest, I think.